of news regarding your your goalkeepers this week in terms of international news. So probably best to start there. Um, let's start with Kira because amazing news for her to obviously get the, the England call up. She must have been delighted and yeah, I'm sure you've had a conversation with her about that. Yeah, really pleased. She deserves it. She's come in and done, done really well. We, we obviously completely aware of Kiara turning professional last season. Last season was her first season as a, as a pro, so she learned a lot working with two other good goalkeepers and uh, yeah, I think she's she's grabbed a hold of the, the shirt and you know exuded real confidence in that for someone so young and it's been rewarded with, with an international call-up, which is great for her, great for her family, great for everyone at the club and everyone's super pleased for her. Yeah, and what about Sandy as well? Obviously she's made the decision to, to play for Scotland. Was that something that, that she discussed with you at, at any point? Yeah, yeah, we had good discussions around it and the process of that because it's not easy, obviously, being involved with with England and uh, yeah, of course, we had conversations around it and I said that she's certainly got the name to be Scottish, uh, but yeah, it's we we want to support the players in in anything that they want to do, football related. So I think it's about her feeling of. I think it's an important one when you're an international player that you, you have pride in representing. And I think for Sandy personally, it's uh, it'll be special special for her and her father uh, particularly because um, you know that's where the, the heritage comes from. And I think uh, it's it's a real positive. You know, I think it's it doesn't happen too often. And the fact that she the one surprising thing was that she'd never made a kind of uh, Appearance which qualified her as as being being a, an England international. Uh, I think that probably took a few people by surprise, even myself. So, I think she had the opportunity to do it. She had good discussions with various people, and um, and now it's a reality. So, yeah, we're right behind her with that. Yeah, I think people have only probably just started getting her surname right, actually, just as she decides to to go and join Scotland. Um, and just just a word on Coombsy as well. Obviously, it must have been quite disappointing for her to. To miss out on the England squad, there's lots of competition in in that position. But um, yeah, what what was kind of her take on it, and have you have you had a, a chat with her about that? Coops is fine. Yeah, I think it was a it, it was a, a conversation that we we'd had pre pre camp. Um, and we have good conversation with with Serena as well. So I think um, you know when you when you think of Laura, she's probably not had much of a break, much of a breather in that sense. Has had to be. Uh, was in the World Cup, obviously, the same as Esme, the same as some of the other players who were there who probably didn't get too much game time. Ellie Roebuck, the same. So I think it's really difficult when you're in that supporting role all of the time to continually do it. And I think sometimes in the international break, there's certain players that we have who get, that's their opportunity to get kind of a bit of a rest and recover and, and certainly from the, the mental side of it as well. So I think hopefully this will help Laura. Um, I think she's still an important member of that England squad. I think she's rightly deserved to be included in it uh, over the last season for her performances. And I don't see that changing in the future. So I think there's always going to be uh, some movement in that sense. Yeah, and just looking ahead to the weekend, uh, top of the table clash, um, <laughs> which a lot of people are saying. Is that is that perhaps maybe surprise you a little bit, just, just how well Leicester has started? I think a lot of people expected them to, to be much improved this season, but... Yeah, they've started off really, really well, haven't they? Yeah, um, I'm not surprised, if I'm honest, because I think that I saw signs of this team performing in the way they're performing under Willie at the back end of last season. Certainly saw a change. Uh, we played them quite early here. We played them in the Cup. We also played them away at the King Power um, quite early in the season. I think, uh, And then obviously Willie took over and, yeah, he's really put energy into the team, put quality into it and they're, they're a force to be reckoned with at the moment so it's uh, certainly a game that we're looking forward to in that sense. We're really pleased to be top of the league, um, we're enjoying that moment but we don't see it as a short term thing, we want to be there. We know how tough it is to remain at the top but we're just taking it game by game and looking forward to the game at King Power on Saturday and, and uh, going into the international break still in that same position. Well, all the best. Thanks, Gareth. Thank Cheers. You. Thanks, and we'll go to Joe Curry from BBC Sport as well, please. Hi, Gareth. Good to see you. Hi, um, in the past, we've seen Manchester City have very busy transfer windows. I'm just wondering the fact that 
this summer you only brought in the one player it's a far more settled squad how much has that helped with this brilliant start to this season well yeah I, I think it has I, I think it's always a I won't use the term risk but I think it's always a situation where what is the best thing is it to, to bring in an influx of many players like we did last summer which we knew that not all of them are going to adapt very quickly to, to the WSL, particularly when there was very little experience for some of them. So I've always looked at how, trying to have a settled squad as much as we possibly can, and that's tough. You know, It's really tough to make sure that players are secured on longer contracts, uh, particularly ones you want to... And then also looking at what you feel might be able to help us. And we certainly felt that was the case with Jill, and I think her early form has shown that that's the player that we we brought to the club that's the reasons why we bought her and uh, yeah uh, but I certainly think it's uh, most people might have looked at it as maybe a weakness that we haven't done much business but actually I saw it as a strength and we see it as a strength that continuity with players that we trust and that we work with um, and I think that's probably the biggest thing for a coach these days is having time to work with players so it's so difficult with the international breaks and obviously the major tournaments in the summer but for us to be able to continue with the same team same players that I think has certainly sh shown signs particularly of our performances in the first four games of uh, of a real strength of ours so I was really pleased with the way the players have started the games um, particularly the way we've dominated possession I think has been great and the teams change a little bit here and there but we've got real good options now and probably more options than we've maybe had in the past which is always going to help and just on Jill I think most people were very aware of her qualities when you signed her but even you surprised that she's managed to have such a big impact on the team and so quickly yeah and I think probably more than I expected if I'm honest I think that she's uh, a player more than capable of scoring goals she always seems to have this sense of arriving in the right moment and but more than anything, I think she's just a player who is uh, really eager to learn and, uh, and eager to improve. And we brought her here knowing that she's one of the best in that position in the world and we want to make her the best. And there's a long way to go within that. But her, her willingness to learn and her willingness to adapt and her willingness to join a new team, I think I have to give great credit to the players and the environment that we create here with allowing her to be herself. I think that's really important. And I think that's really like what we were talking about before of having a settled group. I think that really allows one player to come in and, and be supported in every way. So I've been really impressed with her. She's obviously helped fill the hole whilst Bunny's been getting to 100%. Will the fact that there's now another player who's offering as, as many goals as, as Bunny was last season going to take the pressure off Bunny slightly? Or maybe will it also encourage her because she's got that little bit of competition in the squad? Yeah, yeah, maybe, but I think there's other competition as well, you know, you, you know that Lauren, Chloe, Jesse are capable, Mary Fowler, I think, is is going to run them close this season, you know, the amount of chances that she will get into, the amount of chances she creates, played in some fantastic balls at the weekend, along with others, so yeah, I think it's exciting, and we need that, we need variety at the, in the front line, players that bring different things, so um, yeah, I think Bunny is always... You know, such a focal point for us in that she brings goals, but also she creates so much within the team in terms of how we want to build. She's probably her her hold up play has improved so much since her first season with us. You know, we've worked hard on that, and I think she's you know now currently playing at such a high level uh, is that she goes into each game really confident and really looking to score and and be a real handful for oppositions, which she always is. Thanks, Gareth. Best of luck. Thank you, Joe. Thanks, Joe. We'll go to Phil from PA next, please. Hello. <clears throat> Hi. Hi. Hey, um, yeah, I'll, I'll just do the uh, standard team news check if possible. And I was wondering particularly how Lauren Hemp is. Um, she, she didn't make the squad last weekend, but then uh, Serena called her up. So uh, I assume she's yeah. sort of on very much. She's bend. fine. She's fine. She's trained this week, so she's available. She's available for the weekend. The only player who's not available is still Demi, but we've had her on pitch with us this week and hoping for full integration after the international break. Uh, it's come at a bit of an unfortunate time for Demi, but I think it gives her a little bit more time to build up and do some work with us. Uh, but yeah, I think um, outside of Demi, everybody is, is fit and available. 
Great. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. And then we'll go to Sandra from The Sun next, please. Hi, Gareth. Hi. Um, I just wanted to ask, hi, uh, just in terms of just going back to the call-ups for um, Kiara, but then also for Jess, just, uh, you know, how important it is in, ter in terms of them being role models for your academy players as well, just for those yeah. players to see that journey that, well, Kiara has certainly been on, um, you know, still a teenager and now starting for City, but then also Jess in terms of the progress they're making and into that international team as well as uh, playing for City's first eleven. Yeah, of course, you know, the likes of Jess, likes of Esme, Kiara coming through, you know, we try and integrate the young players who we feel have a have an opportunity to to do good things for us as a club. We give them as much opportunity as we can. It's really difficult with the rules and regs around trying to create a games programme for them. So what we tend to do is is most of those players that or three or four players, the likes of Annie Hutchins, the likes of Ginny Lackey, Lois, Jemima. Um, Gracie Pryor, Emma Siddle, they're training with us on a regular basis during the week, maybe one or two days, and then go and play for their respective clubs uh, in the lower divisions, which is great for them. I think it keeps a good balance of both, rather than keeping them here with us, not getting the necessary game time. Um, and of course, those examples, the likes of the players we mentioned who've broken through over the years, I think is really always going to be a, a strong selling point for them to really knuckle down and do well and, and give it their very best but and that's changed a lot I think even in the three years that I've been here the the difference now between being able to call on those players as per my first season when we were still in Covid was was so so difficult I think the levels have improved a lot within the academy and that's allowed us to be able to to bring in these players more often And just obviously going back to some of what uh, you were saying to Joe about, you know, um, Jill and, and Bunny just immediately hitting the money as soon as G's returned. But you've also, I guess, got Leia Alexandri adding to that goal tally. Just how important is it at this uh, stage to have the goal shared around um, for City, particularly with the league looking a lot more competitive than it was last season? Mm. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it was nice for Leia to... Uh... To get that feeling, I think you know Lai is such a, a good person to work with. She's very professional. She gives you everything. She's so intelligent, and uh, she's been a really important player for us. And I think you know last season we lost her at an important moment, and we felt that the levels within how we did things dropped slightly because of that. I think she's got a good relationship with the players in the back line, also with Yui. I think she's uh, she's incredibly professional and, and a great player to work with, and. Um, is uh, is one of our like silent captains, if you like. You know, she's got such leadership for a young player. I think the way she handles herself and the way she gives every single thing for the team, I think she epitomises what we're uh, what we're about. That's great. Thanks and good luck this weekend. Thanks, Gary. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers Thanks, Sandra. Any more questions, guys? Tom, yeah, Tom. Yeah, hi Gareth. Hi. I just wanted to ask you uh, just for your your thoughts for the whole of the WSL that we've only got one representative in tomorrow's Women's Champions League draw. I know mm. that you felt unfortunate in recent years in how frequently you had to face Real Madrid um, and with Arsenal and Man United. I guess I'm just wondering your take on the events of the qualifiers and what it what, it, what it, how tough it is for the WSL to only have one team left. Yeah, I, I think it's like I've been saying it. You know, you've heard it from me before. Probably people weren't listening then, and now it repeats itself this season. I think it's uh, it's so difficult. I, it's a shame because you lose teams of of good standing who probably should be in the group stage. I probably think it makes it easier for the ones who are already there, the likes of Bayern, the likes of Leon, the likes of Chelsea, the likes of Barcelona. It becomes a much easier qualifying process for them when they're playing teams. That are a lesser level. There's no doubt about that. But I've been saying it for a while. I think um, it's tough. It is really tough. You work so hard all season to guarantee a European spot, and then it's within a game or two games. It's you, you know you're done. And I don't think just with us in the WSL. I think it's all around. You know, there's other teams that have fallen foul. I, I watched the Paris game against uh, Wolfsburg last night. You know, Wolfsburg are in the final last season, and now. For one reason or another, they've been eliminated as well. So I think it's, um, I don't know, it's obviously an, an inclusion thing where everybody has the opportunity. But I think what it does is it does, we do tend to lose the probably the better teams 
at an earlier stage than probably needs to be. And just to bring it back to your match this weekend, does it kind of add extra fuel to try and win the league so yeah. you're not yeah. in that process? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You don't want to go through that process. You know, if we have to, we have to, but we want to win the league. You know, we want to win the league because we want to be there, not messing about with qualifiers, going straight into the group stage because it's been forced upon us. It's not like the men's Premier League where the top four go through into the group stages. You just don't have that. I think it's... Uh, First thing, it's tough to get in the qualification process. Then the qualification process, we've seen so many teams end up drawing each other. You know, the fact that we drew Real Madrid in a round three game, we drew Real Madrid again the following season in a round two game, it's, it's incredible. But um, yeah, that's our objective, is win the league and take away all of that uncertainty. Thanks, Gareth. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Any more questions, guys? All good? We'll leave it there. Thank Cheers, you, guys. everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.